Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is going to be exclusively about the cryptocurrency. So if you're not interested in that, then go ahead and tune out. I want to share with you a story of uh, what's been going on with me in, in regards to my drama of getting my coins off of Cripsy. I covered that before in uh, another update. This is actually an experience that I had with Poloniex, which is an exchange that I transferred my coins to. Now, first thing we want to do is look at the action in Bitcoin. You can see the action coming out of China. And uh, this is the Huobi exchange. You can see it's 427 a Bitcoin, $427 a Bitcoin. They're, they're translating the Chinese currency into um, dollars. We can go to Bitfinex. So you can see there's a big rally going on. If we go back to the three-day chart, um, the volume is very large on Bitfinex, but it's nothing like what's coming in on the Chinese exchange. You can see absolutely unprecedented volume, nothing like the volume it took to drive uh, it to 8,000 on that exchange. That was the equivalent of a $1,200 price. And of course, we know that, that this is a, and a whole other story I can't even go into, but this is a way of um, doing crosses between the dollar and the Chinese yuan. But you can see here the volume coming in is simply unprecedented. Uh, I, I don't have any doubts that Bitcoin is going to go into a new high. But I wanted to share with you my experience on Poloniex. Um, this screenshot here this is a screenshot of a transaction that failed uh, on a coin that I had shorted on Poloniex. Now Poloniex actually allows you to short cryptocurrencies. So um, here is the account that I have over at Poloniex and you can see I'm logged in here. This is Clam. This is the coin I got squeezed on but you can see that I'm short uh, a number of cryptocurrencies across the board here. But uh, the squeeze that occurred was in this clam coin. Actually, um, the squeeze that I was involved in happened right here. Now, what is interesting is that I went into the chat room on Poloniex and said, oh, I, this is great. I can't believe you have the ability to short all of these scam coins because it's my opinion that most alternative cryptocurrencies or scam coins. Now, as soon as I had made that comment, uh, it's very interesting. First of all, uh, this, is a, this is a site called Poloni Box. And what this site does is it records uh, comments that are made on the chat box. Now, what's interesting is my comments, the comment that I made uh, was about shorting uh, the worthless cryptocurrencies. Now, what's interesting is my comment is not there, but the comment of this other person, M. Landers, yes, good time for you to short lots of clam and uh, incoming, and uh, you may have bailed too early. So it's kind of interesting. It It's like they knew. Now, let me take you over to the thread that's on uh, Cripsy. Um, this is a huge scandal. Uh, I still believe that Cripsy is going to go bankrupt, um, but uh, this is a very long thread. You can see that there's 96 pages of comments, and this person here, uh, Gleb Gamal, and this person, Spetnik, or Sputnik, uh, they have documented the history of Cripsy and their involvement with alternative cryptocurrencies. And so it turns out that what has happened is, and you can see here's the beginning of the thread. So I'm suing Cripsy. And of course the withdrawal issues are still going on at Cripsy. But uh, what this thread is about is the collusion that has been discovered through chat logs and other things between Crips, the Cripsy exchange and the people who, who have rolled out these alternative cryptocurrencies. There's a tremendous amount of collusion that goes on between the exchanges themselves. 
Now, I thought when I got my coins off of Cripsy and got them moved over to Poloniex and then subsequently discovered that I had the ability to short cryptocurrencies on that exchange, then I was really in a good position. Well, what happened? Uh, this shows you, this image is when I was caught in a short squeeze in the clam market. And it turns out, of course, that the exchange, Poloniex, was, was intimately involved in the rollout of this coin. You can see the warnings by the people on the chat, but of course, mine, my comment is, is deleted. But uh, here's what happened when I got caught in a short squeeze. I was actually uh, in, I was short a rising market. Um, just to give you the summary of it, I really only lost about a Bitcoin. It could have been much worse. But you can see this is a screenshot of my attempt to lighten my short position, which was a thousand clams, uh, by 200 clams, and the transaction failed. This happened three times, and that's documented in this email uh, where I'm going back and forth with this Tristan who works on Fresh Desk, which is actually an outsourced support desk. Uh, and this is my, uh, it goes back and forth so many times. Uh, but this is uh, just one message I sent him. Tristan, I find it silly that I need to explain this issue to you again as you seem to be intent on not understanding. You act as if the failure to place my order three times is just one attempt to get out. I was attempting to exit the position entirely by backing out of it. To assume that I'm owed for just one failure when there were three is absurd. It's very clear to me that your system was broken in a runaway short squeeze and other measures were necessary. It appears that you're a person who has never traded anything as you seem to be unable to understand the simplest concepts and strategies. If my first 200 order had been taken, then it would have been followed by a second and a third, at least at prices to avoid the forced liquidation. Now that's what happened to me was a forced liquidation. I was taken out at the worst possible prices, which occurred at the worst prices that have ever occurred to this very day. I don't think 0.6 Bitcoin is so unreasonable. So that was the uh, refund. Now, this person actually admitted by looking at the logs that it was indeed a fact that I was unable to get out of the position. But it's much more important to understand that uh, this happened at the exact same time when there was a short squeeze. So that tells me, of course, they're not going to admit it, but that tells me that uh, the exchange itself is involved in the trading of the coin. And that's a very, uh, very dangerous situation. I do not suggest that you get involved in these markets. Uh, or if you're going to get involved in these markets, uh, you get involved in them in a very, very small way and expect or at least uh, anticipate that everything that you have can be lost. So. That was a very important lesson for me to get caught in a short squeeze. Now, I actually have uh, across the board shorted a bunch of these. I'm going to show you why. Um, this is uh, Ethereum, and uh, this is a coin that has been endorsed by Microsoft. Um, we know, I've covered many times on the Bitcoin channel, that there are many attempts to uh, duplicate Bitcoin and Litecoin and other true decentralized peer-to-peer -peer currencies. Uh, we've got Ripple, and I'm involved in a short on that right now. But you can see here that Ethereum, this is one that Microsoft has bowed, uh, bowed in on. And, and you can see here we've got a market cap of $58 million. Now, I don't have a doubt in my mind that this is a scam coin. This is an attempt by the central bankers and the controllers to divert uh, investment interest into uh, a coin that isn't like Bitcoin. There are many coins that are not like Bitcoin. The other one is uh, Ripple. That's another one that I'm short of. And uh, you can look up the articles on Ripple scam. Uh, basically, this is a coin that uh, the developers uh, have locked up a share of them and uh, they have set aside themselves about 25% of the coin. You can see 
There's a big move here. I am short this move, but I'm watching it very carefully. And uh, this is a coin, and I believe that Ethereum is a coin. Ultimately, they're going to go to zero. These are not true cryptocurrencies. These are actually fake cryptocurrencies. You can see BTC38, which is Chinese, it's got about 722,000 in volume. Poloniex uh, has about $141,000 in volume. But it's my opinion, just my opinion, that these are scam coins. Now, uh, I believe that ultimately there will be a very, very profitable uh, position that I can take by shorting these other cryptocurrencies. Now, Poloniex is the only one I know so far that gives you the ability to short them. Uh, you have to deposit a certain amount of coins. Um, you can see that my positions, I don't have any winning positions right now except for Ethereum, I'm in a winning position, and Dogecoin, I'm in a winning position. I have very, very small positions. I intend to scale into them, especially after the this clam fiasco that I was involved in. But uh, it's my opinion that most of these coins that you can margin and short are going to go to zero or very, very close to zero. So when you're talking about a coin that has uh, a market cap of 50, 60, or $70 million, um, it, it's a very good bet that eventually that scam is going to run out. Now, on the other hand, I don't believe that Bitcoin is a scam at all. And you can see here, technically, when we look at Bitcoin, uh, let's go out to this three-day chart. Um, you can see that as far as the discrepancy between the price move and the volume, we're seeing volume in Bitcoin that we have never seen before. That's not surprising. If you remember, I talked about my video that I did called Bitcoin and Borders, where I explained that Bitcoin gives you the ability to defeat capital controls. It gives you the ability to send money from anywhere on earth to anywhere else on earth. It, it gives you the ability to uh, put your private keys into a brain wallet. Uh, so literally, no exaggeration, you could memorize a certain passcode and take a plane and fly to another country, download a wallet and enter the private keys based on that passcode and pull down a billion dollars that you had sent. So that's very, very important. And it's not surprising that we see these scam coins coming into the space. So that's my new strategy. Um, wish me luck. Uh, I may uh, lose a lot of money, but that's the way the market works. Um, it's very, very interesting to me that I now have the ability to short certain cryptocurrencies and uh, as soon as I got that ability, I started to see uh, rallies in these cryptocurrencies, but I don't think they're going to last. Uh, this is the chart of Ethereum. And uh, just to explain to you how the trading works with uh, Jesse Livermore and uh, the most expert shorts and how they operate, if you're going to short anything, whether it's a cryptocurrency or any kind of commodity, then the way you have to do it is that uh, you have to short into a falling market. If you do not show a profit on your position, and you can see here, this is, a, I have a very tiny position. I, I learned my lesson with that squeeze, but you can see here, this is my unrealized profit 0.009 Bitcoin. I'm short 25 of uh, the Ethereum coin. And you can see that my base price is 22.6. We're now at about 18.8. But uh, again, this is a coin that has about 50 to $60 million market cap. And I personally believe that this coin is going to zero. So if I'm correct, and if I add to my position correctly, um, this exchange, which obviously already tried to rip me off one time, um, will give me the ability to short this thing as it goes down to zero. 
And uh, on the other hand, we're looking at Bitcoin going to, I can't tell you where it's going to go to. Uh, this to me is very clearly a uh, obvious pennant formation. You can see that we had the forming pennant here, a breakout. We had the forming pennant here, a breakout. I believe that Bitcoin is going to take out that $500 price high that we just recently made. And then probably based on past precedent, uh, if it runs five to six fold, then it's probably going to run five to six fold of this price at $500. And that's going to put us at about $3,000 a Bitcoin. And we'll talk to you next time.